In this video, I'll be showing you one easy way to create a fantasy map in a pixel art style. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. So there are about four tools that I will be using for this video, but the first one and the main one that sets the foundation for our map is Super World Box, which is a god simulator. It's sort of a world building game where you create things, you set things in motion and destroy things and build things back up and it's a whole lot of fun, but if you're looking for a good review or overview, this is not that video at all. I will be using it for a very specific purpose and just squeezing what I want out of it and twisting it to my own purposes. And then the plan is to take that world we've created and import it into Photoshop to touch it up and make a finished map. Now, if you end up trying any of this, I would love to see what you come up with. You can always share your own maps over on the WASD20 Discord server. By the way, there's just, I think, one day left at time of posting in the WASD20 mapping contest, which is an edge of the world map. I'll put a link to the Discord server down in the video description. But anyway, let's head over to Super World Box and begin our map. Now, Super World Box is not a sponsor, I have no affiliation, but I will put a link down in the video description if you want to check it out for yourself. When you first enter Super World Box, it will automatically make a world for you, but I want to create my own new custom world, so that's what I'm doing here. Creating a preset and clear ocean preset so that I can form my own land masses. Now I'm selecting the sand tool, or the soil tool actually, and uh, you can see me messing with several different sizes of brush here to try to see what I can do. I'm not very experienced with Super World Box. I've probably spent a total of like four or five hours messing with it ever. And, um, but I'm mostly using the brush tool here for the land masses. Now there's not much rhyme or reason to the shape of my land masses. I'm just trying to make things that I think look cool and look natural. So I'm using various brush sizes and just trying to find out what works best. Now, I want to give a quick thank you to the WASD20 patrons while I'm doing this. Uh, patrons, you rock! Thank you so much. These people are amazing. You can join with them too, and uh, you can actually get access to weekly live map drawing streams with me. So, you know, messing with programs like this, or drawing maps in Photoshop, or on paper. I do all kinds of stuff with the patrons. It's just a really great time hanging out every week. So, uh, yeah, head on over to patreon.com slash WASD20 to check it out, along with a bunch of other cool rewards. Next up here, you see me doing some mountains. So the mountains are a little disappointing. They're just kind of gray blobs. And I also was doing a brush that was a little too big and made them look like big worms. So I adjusted that later and get, ended up getting a little more nuance with my mountains. Now I think there are some uh, mods for this game that will uh, change the art style and things like that. Haven't tried any of them, don't know how that would work. Uh, but overall, the mountains are sufficient to communicate the idea of mountains. And uh, the hills are just a little bit of a lighter gray, and you'll see me adding some of those later on. Next up here, you see me adding forests, and you might wonder, why are the forests just light brown? Well, a couple things have to happen in order for the forest to actually grow. First off, you have to have time moving. So yes, this game has time. You can pause it, you can speed it up. Um, and secondly, you need to add some water. So once you add some rain, the forest will begin to sprout up and you'll see that pretty soon here. You'll also notice as the forests are growing here that the soil is getting covered in light green, which I assume is grass. So that also happens with the passage of time and the addition of water. You can see I've also got the reduced temperature tool going here. And so what I'm doing is I'm making some polar regions, the north and the south. I'm just taking some cold temperature and brushing it across. It gets rid of some of the vegetation and adds some snow. We'll also add a little bit of snow to the mountaintops because that's the way things work in nature. Next, I'm peppering in some other things, some, some bushes, some gold, some iron, things like that. Uh, and just trying to add a little bit more variety to the land. Mm -hmm. 
Now overall, I'm really not touching the destructive tools like volcanoes and bombs and storms and stuff like that, but I did want to try an earthquake and you can see I did one here and I like what it did. It destroyed some things and it just kind of gave the map a little bit more of an irregular look in that area. All right, here's where we get to start adding some living creatures. So there's several different races and you just kind of plop them down here and they simulate life, building things, fighting each other, killing each other. And um, often you can force them to make peace and things like that. Uh, but I decided just to do a little bit of this, just a little bit of dabbling to kind of set a foundation for some settlements on my map and some uh, areas of civilization. I also added a dragon and that has a destructive influence. You'll see some big scorched areas of the, the map later on, um, but I didn't add too many other big scary monsters. At this point, I was about done with the map in Super World Box and it was time to export it. So I wanted to zoom in a little bit to get that more detailed look that you only get when you're a tad bit more zoomed in, but unfortunately then I couldn't take a screenshot of the whole thing. However, I've got a cool program that I uh, have downloaded in the past called Image Composite Editor. It's a Windows program. It is free and it allows you to stitch various images together very easily. As long as there's a little bit of overlap, it can just kind of tell and knows what to do. So uh, I did that with a bunch of screenshots here and that worked pretty well. Then I was able to uh, import that image into Photoshop for some editing. Now I really didn't have very many places on my map that looked like settlements. So one of the first things I wanted to do is just copy some of the existing little buildings and huts and things and then paste them into just a couple other locations on the map. The main reason I wanted to bring this map into Photoshop in the first place, however, was to get some text in here. So I did download a couple of kind of pixelated looking fonts from dafont.com. And uh, then I also thought it would be cool to have some kind of text banner. So I went to pixelart.com slash draw and I drew myself a banner. Now in hindsight, the text banner was a little bit too high resolution. It wasn't pixelated enough. So while I didn't really wanna go back and fix it, uh, I did later when I drew a compass rose, consider that and make my dimensions quite a bit smaller. Now the font that I'm using on this map is called Vastantonius and I uh, thought it was a pretty nice looking font. I also downloaded one that was a little more medieval looking called Alagard, but um, I really liked this one better. It was just more legible and uh, still looked cool and appropriate for a fantasy map, I thought. So uh, named the world Inzomil, and uh, not very scientific method here, just kind of mashing words and sounds together, a lot of back and forth and saying, eh, that doesn't sound good, and eventually coming out with something. <laughs> and uh, named the sea, I named the continents as well, and then I could name the settlements. And for the settlements, I just kind of chose some of these little collections of buildings and gave them names. Now you see me using a white font here and I'm putting a black stroke around it, just one pixel black stroke around it, just to kind of set it apart a little bit more. Now obviously I'm using Photoshop here, but I just wanna put a plug out there for some free programs. Uh, you don't need Photoshop. There are tons and tons of programs that would allow you to do the very basic things I'm doing here, nothing super fancy. Uh, for example, you could use Krita, um, K-R-I-T-A. I hear good things about that one. You could use GIMP. Um, and if you have other suggestions, feel free to put them down in the comments. 
The next thing I'm doing here is I got kind of a square-ish brush and because I wanted to mimic that pixel look. And now I'm, I created an overlay layer and I want to kind of darken the edges of my map just to add a little extra touch to it. So I'm doing that. It looks pretty dark, but then I'm going to tone it down after I'm done. Next up, I'm back to pixelart.com and uh, here I'm going to be making a compass rose. Now, I thought about making a lot of other things like maybe a key, a scale, even like a sea monster or a castle extra settlements. Um, so there's a lot you can do with pixel art, but I did want to add a compass. And so you can see me kind of messing with that here. And then I add that to my map. And uh, after that, we're pretty much done. And there is the finished map. Now, pretty happy with how it turned out overall. Uh, this is the first time I've done this. If you want to get a copy of this map, I will post it on the Discord server in the Maps channel. You can just search for Pixel Map and you'll probably find it. Uh, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you happen to know of other cool tools for making pixel maps, I'd love to hear those ideas too. All right, that's going to about do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the map. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed as well. I post new videos several times a month, a couple times a month, whenever I have time. And I would love to have you as a subscriber. It's free and it helps me out. Of course, you can also support me on Patreon. Check out the link down there. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks again. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.